It's tabletop time! We've just been on our first ever big international adventure over to the con known as Adepticon. So in this video, we're gonna talk about our experience overseas and at Adepticon, but we should start at the very beginning. So while I made my way directly to Adepticon from Australia, some other people took a more relaxed and circuitous approach. Murray, it snowed. It's like American Christmas. It is. <laughs> we don't have this. What is this? Screw that. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yes! Yes, I was aiming for the lens. So it's our first time going to a convention of this size and what a size Adepticon is with multiple gaming halls and reportedly up to 10,000 people attending this year. Also, this convention spans over five days, which is a really long time. I don't think I've ever attended a convention that's been this long before. One of the major reasons we wanted to go over to Adepticon was of course to meet you, the viewers, but also to meet a bunch of our colleagues, content creators we've maintained online friendships with, online pen pal with, and online I've maybe talked to you once or twice as with. That's a thing, right? Or someone I've just liked the video of. Yeah, pretty much <laughs> just like you guys. We went over there to meet a bunch of cool creators. Yeah, we had our YouTuber moments meeting people. We were like, ah, it's them. <laughs> we had an absolute great time sort of getting to know everyone and meeting all of you fans and anyone who came up to us and said hello over the course of the con. Thank you for doing so. It really was a highlight to see you all and hear what you enjoyed about uh, watching on the channel. We also loved all of the food recommendations you guys gave us. We had some really awesome eats over in America that we won't forget. My only regret is that we didn't actually take a lot of photos of everyone. Everyone took photos with us, but we don't actually have a lot to show for it. Yes, we were trying to be like, play it cool, right? And we didn't want to shove cameras in anyone's faces. We'll just pretend we met up with all the cool YouTubers. So Adepticon is absolutely massive and you meet a lot of people. But I've got to admit, we went over there with some preconceived notions of what it would be like. A lot of people talk about Adepticon as this huge highlight of their hobby career. And for people overseas, it's really exciting to look at that on the calendar and go, well, there's going to be this amazing meet and greet and cool thing. What I think I didn't realize is how much other people who regularly go to Adepticon have structured this as part of their hobby lives. And mm. I definitely felt like a tourist over there. While everyone we met was super nice and we had some great interactions with people who spent some time with us and made us feel welcome, a lot of the time, I kind of felt like I was stepping in on other people's sort of pre-arranged event. Like other people <laughs> had a reason to be in a room or, and I was just kind of lurking on the side like, hey man, I'm Dave for Tabletop Time. Could I just hang out with you? Uh, would that be cool? And then like, we're off to dinner or we're off to this. Mm. And they all had these routines um, and, and I kind of felt like I didn't. Yeah, there's definitely a sense of community that's been built with Adepticon for a very, very long time. And we're kind of outsiders in that, but it was still really cool to see all of those communities and how cool some of these games were to experience as well. Yeah, I definitely thought I would be spending a lot more time hanging out with people mm. than I did. And I did spend time with creators but I spent a lot more time wandering around the halls doing a whole lot of like just talking to vendors and stuff and less time like at pubs with cool people. Yeah, yeah, I think it was more business talking or just like even, even the, the realms of talking about YouTube with other YouTubers rather than just sitting down and, and, and chilling a lot. Yeah, and even that didn't happen that much. I, I want to get across, because I know other content creators will watch this, that in no way did we feel, uh, slighted. Or I feel slighted <laughs> in any way. Uh, it just was slightly different to how I anticipated and it became really apparent that everyone had these really precise goals or reasons to being there. Whether it was uh, Scott, John and Vince who clearly were focused on Golden Demon or it was Miscast who had his crazy Pokemon game to play Everyone had sort of these things that they were doing and we went with no plans and kind of just yeah. drifted. I think it was more just maybe a bit of culture shock than like a negative experience. Mm. Like it was in turn really fun to see people like doing these things together. Like it was really fun. But um, yeah, it was definitely odd. 
Yes, <laughs> it, it was the not quite what I anticipated. Yeah. It sort of felt like a bit of a bubble experiencing it. <laughs> yes, yes. But that, of course, was meeting people. That wasn't all you do at Adepticon because Games Workshop have these spicy big reveals. Everyone's excited for the Games Workshop reveal. So what is it like to be at Adepticon for the reveals? Imagine watching a video on your computer at home one hour before it's launched with people's heads in the way after lining up for half an hour. Because that's what it was. They just played a video. Uh, mm. It's kind of lame, to be honest. I, I was really hyped for that reveal and being part of that. Yeah. But, I think yeah. there's something really personal about them chatting on stage afterwards. And I always want to be there afterwards to hear what they've got to say. But when you tune into the live stream, they cut it. There was none of that. It literally just everyone left as soon as the video ended. There was no extra chatter or anything, so. And yeah. we're never afraid to bring this stuff up, but I guess Games Workshop people do watch our videos, so constructive criticism would be, when you overview those videos, just make sure that the points that are being hit, I understand there's marketing points you wanna hit. So many of them were the same thing again and again. It would cut to one person who'd say the same thing, and then it would cut to the next person who would literally, like, not even elaborate on the point, just say, like, restate <laughs> the same thing, like, multiple times. So, um, yeah, that was, it was a bit of a letdown to be honest. But the little tarot cards were cool. They were cool. They gave yeah. our little tarot cards. Mm. That was nice. And they did they did say that a lot of the um GW staff were hanging around the front of the stage afterwards. So if you wanted to go chat with like a game dev at Games Workshop, you could just mosey over and then have a little talk. But we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and something I also thought would be fantastic, and I'd love to see Adepticon take up this idea, would be kind of like a creator reveal that isn't Games Workshop. Like Games Workshop have their event, but we had so many vendors in the vendor hall, so many mini creators with their own games. It would have been really cool if they'd all been given an equally sized showroom for them to each take five minutes on the stage to announce their latest reveals. Mm. Or new products from certain suppliers that I want to know what they're coming out with. Yeah. Rapid fire. Mm. So Adepticon is, despite having like all the big reveals and such, it is primarily a big tournament for every single game system under the sun, right? You've got halls and halls of people playing Warhammer, board games, Star Wars, everything. And we did none of that because we all traveled overseas and we didn't want to lug around armies and models. I had a carry-on bag and that was it. Yeah. For three weeks in America. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's a lot of stuff that I really wish that, you know, looked fun to, like, there's some narrative war cry that mm. looked really fun. Yeah, I think something, if I was to go back to Adepticon or to a similar con, I would love to pre-organize, like, a grudge match or a game. Just something to put a bit of structure into your event. And if you're thinking of going to Adepticon or a similar con, I really recommend looking at the schedule. And even if doing a huge Warhammer tournament uh, is a little bit too daunting. There were so many open play tables constantly going, literally 24 seven. So being able to just say, oh, well on Thursday at eight o'clock, I'm gonna meet up with my friend from this place and we're gonna play a game of Warcry. That kind of thing to just provide a bit of structure, I think would've been really fun. And it's the one thing I regret. It's the one thing I wish I did. So with the fact that we didn't actually bring any models, I think we all knew that we'd be walking away with some models. <laughs> so one of the really cool things at Adepticon is, I think it was just called the Bits Hall. Mm -hmm. but it's just tubs and tubs of sprues, bits, stuffs in Ziploc bags that you can go through, peruse and purchase. As well as behind that, you have trays and trays upon like just people's armies and just really old weird metal models that you can just sift through. Uh, it's sort of like a, an unearthed gold mine, really, to mm. <laughs> enthusiasts. But... Um, I'd say it's an unearthed fool's gold mine because most of the minis and the prices on them made me think there was less gold than nuggets. Hey, there's a assembled Nagash that's been primed and his coat is one color. Uh, $20 off. Yeah, I think it's not necessarily for someone trying to find a cheaper army. It's probably more for people trying to find something that you can't get anymore. Specific units and mm. bits and things like that. Absolutely. Well, however, I do think this is one of the areas that was kind of true to most of my Adepticon experience where this has been massively hyped, as, uh, like mm. for years mm. hyped up how cool Adepticon is. And I don't want to say overhyped because that makes it sound like I was disappointed or I didn't enjoy it, which is not true. But it was so hyped to the point that nothing wowed me. Like the bits haul, I've been told you could buy bits 24 seven. This was all true. What I didn't realize is it was one vendor with quite a wide selection, but one vendor that was open 24 seven that sold bits and old models. When you hear things like bits, halls, I was picturing buy swap cells, like people bringing boxes of their own models, tables, mm. gold mines, old guys that are like 75 and are dragging in their models from when they were like, 
you know, middle-aged buying stuff, wild and wacky cool stuff everywhere. But instead it was just like one cool shop. That was a little bit disappointing. I'll be honest. Yeah, I, th I think we've seen swap meets in the country where just people rock up with their own stuff and it's just bizarre. Yes. I mean, you can get lucky and find some really just weird single things. And I think that's a good segue to bring up my stuff. Your single things? Oh, yeah. Is this the stuff you bought from the Bits shop? Yeah, this is all from the Bits haul. Okay. So I found myself uh, some old metal Dark Elf oh, Corsairs. Yeah, they're cool. You actually found like the two coolest sculpts on the entire... I know, right? That guy's sick. I, I'm pretty sure this is a, a Wood Elf Sorceress. Oh my god, those bazongas. And I gotta glue his staff back on, but I have a old classic fantasy Zinch Sorcerer. Oh, he's cool. He's yeah, very I cool. saw him. He was really cool. Uh, in a previous video, we had a look at uh, the new Striking Scorpions. And Dave and I both agreed that the second or third edition of Striking Scorpions had some of the coolest models. And I managed to find one. Yeah, an old metal Striking Scorpion. Yeah, with a little curly, curly mm. helmet. Yeah, very cool. And, because I'm a sucker for them, I found a really old Thousand Suns Marine. Just the monopose yeah. Thousand Sun. Yeah, with a little flat head. And he has his backpack, that's good that we yeah, found yeah. There's a lot of space to our backpacks. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, so you can find some really cool stuff, but uh, yeah, I, th I think the, the stories overhype things a little bit, but it was still fun. We had a great time at 2 a.m. Speaking of... I might have egged him on. <laughs> Oopsie. Here is the prize. This is a Praetor Armoured Assault Launcher. The worst unit in Horus Heresy. The uh, That's my my call. Was it good in 40k or bad in It's Her terrible in both, but I think it's even worse in Heresy. Cool. I think it has like... A, a one shot or a chance, like a limited ammo weapon that's like AP5 strength 7 large blast and it's like a super heavy. Yeah. It's garbage. It's, it's one of the it's worst. It's like a limited whirlwind, but three times the size and probably points. Yes, definitely the points, but worse than a Scorpius. But it's okay because it's huge and it looks like it came out of Thunderbirds. Yeah, it's very <laughs> cool. Uh, so, um... I'm going to be doing something with that on the channel, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so the main hall for vendors, the vendor hall at Adepticon, offered a few experiences you can't get with online shopping. And one of the cool experiences there was trying the new army painter Fanatic Paints. We got to sit down and use their reformulated paints for the very first time. And it was really cool to be able to do a bit of a paint and take, try out these paints. Uh, and we got to meet and chat to all the awesome creators that have joined the freshly created army painter factory team, so that was really cool. Mm. I've always thought that Army Paint is, you know, really accessible, it's good price. However, I always thought that the quality of Citadel and Vallejo was always just a bit higher to me personally. Yep. That's what, what I've always found. But these new ones, the Fanatics, they are actually good. I think they're the equivalent of any other range, so mm. I'd really like to see how well they go. Yeah, I definitely thought that they, they'd they fixed the separation issues, which mm. I think a lot of people know about Army Painter Paints, which was really good. And the colors were good, went down well. Yeah, enjoyed it. So this is what happened to Peachy. No! <laughs> but Army Painter wasn't the only vendor we were excited for. Artist Opus was there as well, and we really wanted to check out their dry brush range. Mm. Their store was really cool. They had their Kickstarter light boxes as well, which were awesome to see in person. Uh, and we even got some hands-on experience with their brushes. Yes, I use Artist Opus brushes. Jen has bought me some for presents. They're amazing and I love them. But what I was super excited for was that Byron from Artist Opus was there, and he was willing to give us basically a 10-minute masterclass on just the basic steps to using dry brushes better, to elevating our game. Uh, and that was so good, that kind of one-on-one -on -one instruction that you can only get uh, when you see these people in person. It was just, it was awesome. I was mind blown by what you could achieve with these brushes. Uh, we also saw Jeff from the painting phase over there. That was really cool. And um, there were also some amazing top tier painters showing off their work, rotating through at the Artist Opus booth that you could sit down and actually interact with. So that was super exciting for anyone there. And um, mm. yeah, I was, I was pretty hyped. Yeah, it was a little bit subtle. Like they didn't really have anything proclaiming that there was like a really talented well, artist just sitting painters. there showing off <laughs> their, uh, their, their paintbrushes. Uh, but yeah, they were fantastic people. Uh, great, great show, great tutorials and great people. They were awesome to have a chat with. And with those in-person experiences out of the way, there was a lot of buying to do. Uh, the Games Workshop store is here, which means exclusive event minis, but it also means a chance for Aussies to buy Forge World. So uh, we'll go look through those Forge World bins and see if we can get anything we've been looking forward to. 
So we're going to share with you our hobby loot from Adepticon, right? Our loot, our haul, our dragon's hoard. Sure am. Murray's credit card was slapping all over those machines. Uh, you were fast and loose with your spending over there. Hey, if there's something I couldn't get in Australia, I was buying it. Whereas I was taking advantage of all that YouTuber clout and like a cheap tight ass taking anything free anyone would give me. Hmm. <laughs> Yes, uh, you also took the technique of waiting to see if it was still there later. And uh, how did that turn out for you? So I had a model, I had Exodus in my hand and I was lining up for half an hour and then we had an appointment and I had to put it back and go to the appointment and now it's gone, it's sold out. It wasn't meant to be. Okay. Sold out. However, Things that are meant to be, are meant to be because I did end up getting Exodus on the final day and I can't wave it around and show you that I got that mini because he's already on my painting table being painted at home. Mm. We did, however, pick up uh, the exclusive Adepticon models, the Crute and the Citizen Sigma guy. And I'm actually really excited to use this one for uh, my sister's army, my new Bloodborne sisters. Do something really cool with this. So make sure you stay tuned. We all got all of them. Like we mm. each got two of them both of them because they're event exclusive models um what do you think of them i think they're fantastic i like i am personally a big sucker for crew i've wanted new crew models for ages uh but even i will talk about how nice this age of sigma model is like it's so cool i think the age of sigma model is goddamn stunning and it actually replaces what i think is the my least favorite model in the cities of sigma command core that guy with like the axe i just don't love oh, his pose yeah. and this model technically replaces that as the champion ah. uh, but this guy the crew i could not have less interest in, <laughs> in a model uh not only to me is this a crew which is like niche within a niche that I don't really like. It's also just a crew carnivore. Like he's nothing, he's a nothing. He's just a troop. Yeah, it is really hard to sell how awesome this guy is. Like he looks cool, but they've also shown off so many shapers, which are just really cool on their own. He's just a guy. He's so anyway, he's you're just gonna, a guy. You're gonna have fun with that. Yeah, he's mine. This is, this is yours, but this is mine. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have fun with these ones. It wasn't just games where I Shop. It wasn't just Games Workshop at the event though, of course, and they get enough press. So let's talk about some of the other amazing brands, some of the cool stuff they hooked us up with or we bought. I want to talk about uh, B Bushido. Oh, yes. Okay. We've got yeah. So, so <laughs> a classic example of there was no intent in this. I just think it's really funny. So Murray went to Bushido and purchased a bunch of minis that uh, I want you to talk about. But we went back the next day because we sort of, I'm a, I'm a browse and buy on the last day. So we went back and uh, the guy was like, oh yeah, uh, yeah, you guys are like YouTubers and <laughs> you've bought a bunch of stuff. Have the models that you wanted for free. <laughs> so Jen got her models. Uh, and that was super nice of him, so thank you so much for yeah. that. No, you're welcome. I, I did the prerequisite <laughs> unlocks and you got yeah. the plus we, one. Yeah. Um, so these models were absolutely gorgeous. I think we all mm. were just in love with everything these guys were creating. They didn't have any of the starter sets available on the well, day. They sold out. They yeah. sold out, which is fantastic. Um, but we really wanted to pick up the starter sets so we could play them. But for now, uh, I just really liked some of these minis. So there's this guy on this turtle, which I gravitated towards in Instantly. <laughs> um, he's really, really cool. And he's actually a little bit bigger than just like your normal size mini. So he's really cool. And I also saw this other mini where she's got this like magical effect coming out from her. And I thought that would be really fun to paint up. Yeah, these miniatures, their sculpts really nail some of the special effects. Mm. Uh, I was really drawn to, there was like a, a Kitsune faction. Some like foxes and fox people. Uh, I got a sort of nine-tailed fox companion and also a Kitsune archer, which had this, uh, amazing pose like you see a lot of archer miniatures which are sort of you know eh. but you know you had the 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 pose and the drawback mm. this is they're beautiful miniatures absolutely love them so thank you so much guys for uh giving these ones to us i can't wait to paint these up i'm very excited for that Bushido wasn't the only cool company there. There were so many vendors. Another one that took my eye was Mephidius Entertainment. They were working through their US distributor and they have a range of Fallout miniatures and we got given some of their coolest ones. So this is Swan, who I have very fond memories of killing before I even realized it was a boss because I was like over leveled 
or something in the game, being really confused. Uh, so he's a very iconic super mutant boss in Fallout. Uh, and then and then we do have my favorite faction, uh, the Brotherhood of Steel. Mm -hmm. But they also made, weirdly, that I really like, the Star Trek Adventures minis. Um, mm -hmm. It's a role-playing game and they had like away teams and stuff that's really cool. And they also do the Elder Scrolls mm -hmm. game. So they, they're making a bunch of really cool video game adaptation uh, board games. And this will also be super fun to paint up. I think yeah. they're doing a Dune one as well. And I what? The, yeah, the, from the advertising, there was a Dune one. So that would be really interesting to see as well. Stay tuned. There you go. What else was there? Um, War Gods. Yes. War Gods was another really cool one. You sort of got your classical Olympian, Greek, Egyptian, and Roman forces, very uh, mythological inspired. They're led by, you know, sons of gods and goddesses, and they do, do battle together. Uh, my favourite part about that is that the sculptor for about 90% of the range was uh, an old hat Games Workshop sculptor who actually probably did uh, the old Dark Elf range from Fantasy, which was my lead in to Fantasy. My, my friend who got me into it collected Dark Elves, so that's like mm. what I saw. Uh, so it was really nostalgic to see that sort of design philosophy in another company. It was really, really cool. They also had this awesome table that was like built downwards into it, so you could put your minis and you kind of played over the top of it. It was just really cool. And it had a mirror mm. at the very end, so it looks like it stretches on forever. I just thought that was a really cool idea for a board to have it like a big box. Yeah, very nice stuff. Very cool models. Uh-oh, this is a really cool model. I might have to buy it. <laughs> No, yeah. it's a secret. I picked up this demigod of Artemis 2, uh, which was so cool. I saw the front of this mini and I just saw the way that the fabric was sculpted and it looked like that perfect archer from the Greek era. That just looked fantastic. Uh, and then after picking it up, deciding I wanted to buy it and shaking it, turning it around, I realized that her bum's on full display. Uh, so <laughs> this turned into a very cool archer into a slightly provocative miniature. So that one, I won't be painting on the channel. That will go behind the tiny velvet curtain. On the <laughs> don't, don't you guys have the tiny velvet curtain on your top shelf of your mini things for like bums? Like when you're painting Louise's Gotham bum. And another favourite is, of course, Victoria Minis. Victoria Lamb is an Australian creator of great minis and parts, and I had the rare opportunity to be at Adepticon for the first and, who knows, maybe only time ever, and every year Vic does an Adepticon exclusive. So this year, almost perfectly, it's like Vic knew what to create for me. There is this female trader guard, and I was like, yeah, I, I, okay, we're getting the traitorous Adepticon exclusive, mm -hmm. so had to grab that. Yeah, we both got one. <laughs> one of the other vendors that was at Adepticon was the Big Child Creative. I think they were also with the Adam Paints as mm. well. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not 100% sure. They were launching Adam it. Paints. Yeah, which was a new new line of paints. So I didn't get to check those out, but I did pick up a couple of models. So this particular model I had actually seen on a previous trip to Japan, and it was very, very expensive, and I decided not to get it. So I saw this the second time, and I'm like, well, it's a sign. And she looks like a medieval sister of battle, uh, and I'm very excited to paint this one up. I also got this tiny little queen, uh, Guinevere, as well. And she came in a bigger size, but I thought I'd pick up one of the miniature ones because it was really cute. So these are minis I've seen before, and so I knew I had to pick them up, and they're really pretty. Yeah, gorgeous sculpts, great sculpts of women, and also really cool to see sculpts of the same models, but then they have like 35 mm -hmm. mil and 75 mil varieties. And so bust as well. You, yeah, if you want to do wargaming ones, or if you want to do more painting display one, mm. you have the choice, mm. which is super cool. So as many of you may know, I own a game store, and I've been seeing these brush packs pop up a lot and Chronicle cards make them and they were actually there. So I thought why not grab some and we can check them out and actually see if they're any good. So we picked up one of them but they actually gave us the other two and they have these interesting wolf bristle brushes which are actually made from wolf hair which is sustainably gathered doesn't hurt the animal which I thought was a really cool alternative to Sable and wanted to try it out. Obviously it's for different purposes, heavy wear. And uh, yeah, it was really cool to see these brush packs. So we'll be checking them out and seeing how they go probably in future videos. But the people at Chronicle Cards were super lovely and thank you very much for hooking them up. Uh, they also have really cool packaging and uh, they weren't too expensive for the quality and what they are, especially the free ones. Hmm. <laughs> Another shop that we checked out multiple times, because we kept coming back to it, was Arena Rex, mm. which was a very gladiatorial based one. Uh, again, with a lot of sort of uh, classical factions, Egyptian, Roman, Greek, uh, even a bit of uh, Norse and Celtic. Really cool models, once again, absolutely 
incredible sculpts. Uh, I picked up a Hoplite inspired one because I am a sucker for anything Hoplite based. <laughs> yeah, really cool. And also Jay from Eons of Battle was getting into it and, mm. and did invite us to come take a look, but we got taken away elsewhere at the 9.30 or something when he was playing. So um, it would be really cool to check that out in the future. Absolutely. I also grabbed these weird mushroom things from a game called y Yasurger. Can't even pronounce it, but they were super cool. And I actually painted one up in the what, Fort Wapalius, the, the little painting section that everyone can paint all night and all day, which was super cool. Now the vendor I was really excited to see was Bombshell Minis. Uh, there was an amazing line of female miniatures in these different poses and styles. And I picked up a couple of their miniatures. Uh, there was one that was a Valkyrie that really spoke to me. And there's also this cleric, which I thought was very cute too. Yeah, I love seeing those sort of independent miniature sculptors and producers where you just get these blisters of a single model that's like completely not related to anything, uh, but it's just really cool and well designed. So they're always fun to pick through. We also hooked up with Loot Studios to check out their new game of Relics Untold. And we had a great playthrough of that. It's a really fun game and we might be working together in the future to put something together there. We had a lot of fun with that. We also got a free miniature. The minis are gorgeous, but we all know Loot Studios minis are gorgeous. The important thing was I absolutely whipped Murray in the game that we played together. So much so that I don't think he ever Ever wants to play with me again. He's very humble about it. We also spoke to a group called War Scenery who gave me some very cool renegade guards so I can paint them up and fit them inside of my Trader Guard forces. They make a range of terrain mostly, including some very cool Dawn of War inspired ones, uh, which was super fun to see printed up on the tables. And while there were other vendors there, they were the ones that took our eye and took our attention for most of the day. And our money. Yes, and our money. <laughs> and with that, most of the convention was done leaving armies on parade. So on the Saturday night, all of the participants, all the people in the tournament, will gather together and put up their big display boards that they've done for their armies. And we've seen armies on parade, on different websites and such. However, Adepticon is something different. Oh yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> so we had some boards that were taller than a human when fully assembled, and some were just like lavishly decorated interiors of starships that, you know, their troops could just be set up inside. That was some seriously cool stuff. Uh, absolutely inspired. It was actually kind of a shame. They only had it for like a couple of hours where the people could come out and you could talk to them. And I really would have loved a good like amount of time because there were so many people crowded in such a small area. So it took a while to go through them oh, all yeah. and you couldn't see them all. So I would have loved just a little bit of extra time to actually talk to the creators. Um, but it was phenomenal to see these boards. And that was the Saturday. So with tired feet, uh, tired eyes, we went to bed and the next day it was Golden Demon where a lot of people had put a huge amount of work, hopes and dreams into these cabinets. I did think to myself, there is probably very few cabinets you could drunkenly stumble into that would ruin just as many people's day as these cabinets. So I stayed clear of them uh, <laughs> after the hours of 9 p.m. All of us actually originally intended to enter Golden Demon. We really, really wanted to get in on it. However, you know, things happen, time shifts, and basically it got down to, would we be happy in doing something in like two months? Yes, we were only definitely sure we could go to Golden Demon uh, this year. And we kind of started projects, but realized that the stress of putting it all together so quickly and then traveling to America with them uh, would kind of outweigh the joy of entering. Yeah, it would sort of ruin the fun for us a bit. We just decided, nah, we'll just check them out this time. It was really cool to see all of these entries in person though. I think that we don't have such a high level of paint. Like we've got high level painting in Australia, but to see it all in the one area is something that I've mm. never had before. Yeah, and so many people from around the world. Uh, some of the finalists, some of the Golden Demon winners were in fact Australian, which hey. was awesome. You remember the um, the Saurus ones, the little oh, diorama. That cool. was that was uh, from Games Workshop in Melbourne. Really? Yep. I think it's uh, the store manager there. The rest, as we know, is history. Plenty of people have covered who won Golden Demon. But I will say from our perspective, it was very cool to see John take home the bronze yeah. after that big journey. Uh, sort of there's a camaraderie between colleagues, we feel. Even people that we don't talk to a whole lot online. It just felt really special for one of the YouTubers uh, to basically take home a gold because I think uh, people like that make us look good. So mm. thanks, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we, we had a good time talking to some of them. 
uh, and how much they may or may not like their entry after how many hundreds of hours they spent painting them. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a good time all around. <laughs> and that brings us to the end of our American Odyssey, our journey overseas and our very thorough coverage of Adepticon and the experience. Uh, if you liked this kind of informal video, this vlog video, let us know in the comments because we're thinking of making some more insightful talking uh, hobby journey videos in the coming weeks and we'd love to share them with you. Thank you to our patrons for, uh, well, keeping the lights on while we were overseas, mm. keeping things running. We do appreciate it. It is because of you that we can continue to make content and do this as a job. So we really do appreciate it because that kind of stuff going to Adepticon once in a lifetime. Mm. But I do have a question for you two. Mm -hmm. Would you go back? If I could go back, experience it, do Golden Demon, I absolutely would. However, that was a hell of a trip. Yeah, it's a 14 hour flight for us to get to America. Mm. Yeah. yeah, just to Los Angeles. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's exactly. It's another four and a it's, half to Chicago. It's a long, oh, expensive I'm flight. just gonna be honest, America is so expensive. It's so ex I'm like, that's it. That's so me, expensive. that's all of it, that's, that's, that's it, ridiculous. And uh, I do think if I, if I pinch my pennies and save up my next international trip, I think, Nottingham is mm. calling. And uh, while I did have a great time at Adepticon and I'd love to go back, uh, maybe if we got some sponsors or something that was, wanted us to come over and do something there, that would be super cool. But I think as a, as a punter, as a holidayer, a vacationer, a tourist, I think my next trip is to Warhammer World 2026. I don't know. Mm, We've got to save up, yeah. you know? <laughs> it's going to take a while. Yeah, but on the whole, I'm really glad I went. Oh gosh, yeah. yeah, it was great. It was an amazing experience. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So thanks to everyone who came up, said hi, or just followed us through this journey. <laughs> it's been a blast. Get out of here. Goodbye. Get out of here. Oh, okay. No, them. I'm stuck. Oh, you oh, should stay. Oh. Yeah. I can't. Okay. No, th them.